Molnir Piravir comes from a uh, from the name uh, Molnir. Now Molnir is the hammer of Thor. So <laughs> we thought that uh, this would be the drug that will probably um, you know end the pandemic or probably stem the pandemic a bit. Whenever a drug comes out, the first thing that is done is animal studies. So ferrets and mice are actually tested with these with large doses of these drugs. Molnupiravir should not be used in in individuals less than 60 years of age. Hi guys, this is Meena Devan and you're watching healthsciteanida.com. Well, a lot has been said and a lot is still being said about the new antiviral drugs launched in the market to help battle the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. And to throw some light on it, today we have with us Dr. Sanjeev Sasitharan, Head Critical Care, S. R. Raheja Hospital. Hi, doctor. How are you? I'm fine, Mini. I'm fine. Hi. Hi. Um, so, doctor, a lot is being said. A lot of confusion here. A lot of people are dealing with multiple facts with regards to the antiviral drugs launched in the market. Specifically, if we talk about the first drug that was launched, Molnupiravir. Um, a Let's discuss about the authenticity of this drug. How important is this drug, and how efficient is this uh, particular pill? So we've been fighting this uh, pandemic uh, from two years from now, and uh, what uh, we we are we have been trying to figure out where there could be an antiviral, where there could be something that could combat the virus directly. And uh, just to correct you a little bit, the first antiviral that we had was Remdesivir. It was an injectable drug. and now we have an oral drug by the name of molnupiravir so whenever an oral drug comes into existence our first problem is that it's going to be used in mass there's going to be a large number of people who are going to use it and this could lead to its unscrupulous use you remember what happened when steroids came in as a uh, uh, when uh, steroids came in you know we people were using it right left center without understanding the indications and we did develop a large number of side effects which include included the increase of fungal infections um, in the country similarly we also feel that if if a drug an oral drug comes in if it is not been used cautiously and in the right and indicated cases there could be a lot of problem but you must remember molnupiravir the name molnupiravir comes from uh, you know it, it's it's interesting molnupiravir comes from a uh, from the name uh, molnir you know molnir is the hammer of thor so <laughs> we thought that uh, this would be the drug that will probably um, you know end the pandemic or probably stem the pandemic a bit and that's the reason that uh, you know we were all very excited when this particular drug was launched Yes, we need a drug. Uh, there are going to be variants. We know that vaccines may not be as effective against variants. We see that very clearly with uh, the Omicron variant coming in. Not very, very, very effective for that matter. Um, whereas antivirals may be drugs that may be effective against variants too. So looking in the future, uh, it is very important to have an oral antiviral. Antiviral होना बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है for the future. I I feel. I also read somewhere that initially this particular drug was meant to treat just the common cold and flu. So how did this uh, particular thing, which was just meant to treat common cold or flu, turn into, uh, you know, something so big and to treat the uh, COVID patients, or perhaps turn into an antiviral drug? Yeah. So uh, since the last uh, since the last two years, we've looked at at least seven uh, thousand odd molecules. Now this is called as uh, repurposing. a molecule that is used for something else is then tried and tested for the SARS-CoV-2 virus and then uh, it is used you must understand that almost all antivirals are being scrutinized against SARS-CoV-2 now the virus this is also a virus similarly uh, the, the the common cold also spreads through viruses also like rhinoviruses and things like that so anything that will affect a certain virus may also affect the SARS-CoV-2 virus and that is why we've been trying to repurpose most of these drugs um for um for uh, against this sars cov2 uh, virus too also a lot is being said about the dangers of this particular uh, pill um there's still no proper data or perhaps research where it says that it's you know uh, perhaps 80% or 90% efficient also let's forget 100 and there's a lot being said that particularly it's very dangerous for people uh, you know in the age group of 15 to 45 specifically a uh, female 
is it true uh, let me just uh, break down this question to two parts let me first say how effective this particular drug is now and from where does that data come in so uh, as this pandemic has gone we've been uh, you know also researching at pandemic speed so one of the uh, one of the researches that came out early last year was about uh, in, in the us with somewhere around 700 odd patients 800 odd patients were actually tested with molnupiravir now which are those patients it they were those patients that were not on oxygen they were sitting at home they had very very mild symptoms those who were more than 60 years of age who had diabetes and comorbidities it was those patients in which this drug was given what was found was that um 50% of those patients uh, uh the, it reduces the incidence of hospitalization you know hospitalization and adverse outcomes by around 30 odd percent this is what we understood that you will not get into the hospital or you will not get severely ill 30% of the times uh if you were to take this uh uh molnupiravir this was what it was and uh, this was also a group of individuals who were unvaccinated non vaccinated these were not vaccinated individuals so how this drug will work in vaccinated individuals we don't know so that's about the effectivity the effectivity does it's not does not mean that it will finish the virus and you will 100% be safe it just makes you reduce your hospitalizations by around 30% this is all that it does compared to if you do not take the drug and that also in mild patients who are kind of asymptomatic okay now when you look at the big picture as to what happens if it is given for those people in the conception age or who are pregnant so there have been a large number of animal studies you must understand whenever a drug comes out the first thing that is done is animal studies so ferrets and mice are actually tested with these with large doses of these drugs so when they tested with these large doses of drugs what they found out was these mice these ferrets and all these animals did develop skin problems skeletal problems cartilage problems and even cancer so that is the reason that this particular drug cannot be used on all individuals okay it can cause problems these are the side effect profiles that we talk about uh, among rats in very very high doses especially those people who are pregnant if they were to take this drug there is something called as a teratogenic effect now the teratogenic effect means the child may be born with uh, an eye problem a skeletal problem or a cartilage problem and that is why in the age group of 15 to 45 or if you go to conceive in the next 3 months this is not a drug that should be given to such people especially women of the child bearing age and those people who are going to conceive and you must remember these are this is history in the past there was a drug called as thalidomide and people who took thalidomide at that time which was also used uh, a large scale they developed uh, arm uh, and leg deficits uh, de- deformities so that is the reason that this drug has to be very carefully used in in the age group that you mentioned 15 to 45 especially with child bearing potential so uh, exactly uh, what age group or people perhaps apart from people who are suffering with some major illness or comorbidities who else should ideally take this drug i mean uh, w- w- for whom is it uh, efficient enough if we talk about the age group so uh, the age group where it has been authorized by the us fda is more than 60 years molnupiravir should not be used in in individuals less than 60 years of age at least going by the trial results and trial data we should understand that it should be used in those people who are more than 60 years and who have got a very high chance of progressing into uh, severe cases of uh, covid so it is only in those patients we should use and only if there are no other options available uh, uh, no other better options available so it has to be used in a very small proportion of patients who have uh, very uh, more than 60 years and who are going to progress or who feel who, who we feel may progress into the severe illnesses Doc, please break this down for me and help us understand. Now, when we talk about the age group of 60 and above, already, uh, you know, the immunity of the body and the body, perhaps overall, in terms of health, would be on the weaker side because the age group is such. So, um, SMA isn't it more serious to perhaps uh, or more risky to perhaps use a drug which, in all probabilities, have tons of side effects. how is it efficient for that particular age group who is already uh, you know very 
uh, prone to serious illness so uh, let me tell you this uh, what are the side effects that this particular drug has so among all the side effects that it has it has 3% of diarrhea 2% of nausea so these are the only basic side effects that it has it has problems if you were to treat it uh, in the child bearing age because this is teratogenic it may cause limb abnormalities and sky and you know skeletal abnormalities and eye abnormalities in people of the child bearing age so these are the side effects it has it is not that it has got major amount of side effects you must understand that this doesn't drop the immunity in any way molnupiravir does not drop immunity in any way all it does is that it creates a small change in the viral rna and prevents it from replicating again and again so that means to say how does a virus uh, spoil or get into this difficult condition how do you get covid diseases a virus gets inside and then it replicates and replicates and produces millions and millions of progenies and that is when you kind of become very very sick what this what this molnupiravir does is it's a very very intriguing molecule it creates a small change in the viral genome and prevents it from replication so what happens the virus stops increasing its progenies this is what it does so seemingly it does not cause majority or major side effects that we talk about and the only side effects that we know of which we are seen in clinical practice especially in that particular study is is the fact that it has got a little bit of diarrhea a little bit of nausea but yes in the uh, we do not know what happens in the long term so if you were to use it for a long term uh, we do not know uh what would happen but we know that in the in the short term for 5 days these are the only side effects that we would get also uh, if you could break down the process of intake of this particular pill if somebody who is say 60 and above and is facing covid and is suffering may perhaps in home isolation what should one do what should be the first step in terms of consumption of this drug so uh, at the moment uh, this particular molecule is being marketed by five odd companies in in mumbai um to name a few it's cipla uh, hetero um, a few of these small uh, uh, agents uh, are i mean these companies are marketing this drug it comes in a in a box it comes in a in a in a container which has got capsules um of 200 mg uh, you are also getting capsules of 400 mg the dose is 800 mg Uh, once in the morning and once in the evening before or after food there's no relationship to food per se but morning and evening this is how the drug is taken for a total of 5 days it is said not to increase it to beyond 5 days the drug has to be taken only for 5 days and stopped so this is the entire way that this particular drug is uh, administered and taken and if in case in 5 days they still don't see any uh, perhaps any redressal or any relief what should be the next step no that's that's when you have to immediately contact your physician it's important in covid that you don't contact after 5 days your physician should be in tune with what's happening to you every 2 days or every 1 day you should be giving him an update as to what is your oxygen level what is your pulse rate what is your temperature because he needs to act much faster than all of this he needs to act much faster than all of this you can't wait for 5 days and then come to the uh, uh, then contact him because you are going to be that particular patient who has got comorbidities who is more than 60 years old so we can't wait for a long time after starting molnupiravir we should be keeping our physician informed and they have to get admitted definitely if this drug doesn't work all right i think um, that's about it for now doctor this has been very very insightful thank you so much for joining us today